So we watched some things. We watched one thing for this week. Yes. To talk about. Uh, so we watched Stepford Wives. We did. We did. And we found our role in society. We sure did. It's making blankets and cooking and... Cooking many cupcakes. Cleaning the house, having babies. Yes. Uh, and not having opinions. That's important. Yes. Unless it's about the drapes. <laughs> uh, so we watched uh, Stepford Wives, which is from 2004. It's directed by Frank Oz. Uh, this is a remake. We did also watch a bit of the original. Yes. So it is about the secret to a Stepford wife lies behind the doors of the men's association. I feel like men shouldn't have associations. <laughs> Okay. I feel like that's Strong, my main takeaway. Bold, bold claim. Uh, uh, maybe maybe women don't either. I just feel like we should form. Nobody should have them. Uh, cult like clubs mm-hmm. that are used as means to do bad things. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's a given. Um, just so, my thoughts. Yeah. Oh, I can't have those. Oops. Yep. Oops. Oops. <laughs> uh, so it is a. Okay. One, I just wanted to say, Nicole Kidman's, like, super tall. That's one thing I just wanted to say. And in yes. this film, it's very knowledgeable. Uh, but even if you have never seen Stepford Wives, which yeah. I had not seen it until this episode, uh, you still know what it is. Yeah. Like, everyone knows what a Stepford Wife is. Like, it's just in our, like, you know, common culture. Well, yeah, I think people think, like, 1950s housewife. Yeah, but they also know the whole premise, right? Yeah. Everyone knows, like, what it was. Um, Women be too smart. They're doing too much. Yeah. Put them back to the <laughs> um, way things were. It was better then yeah. for men. Yeah. Well, and I think it's just that this ideology of a step for wife is more than just, like, a film, right? It's a statement. It's a way of life. A cautionary tale yeah. for women of, like, look what happens when you're you obedient to your husband. Or if you're, like... Not obedient to your husband. Yeah. Uh, according to an article I found on filmcomment.com, in 2003, there was the New York Times Stepford Spring Fashion Supplement and a Maureen Dowd column headline, The Stepford Wives, now showing at the Botox Salon near you. So there's like, there's clothing that was yeah. <laughs> attributed to it as well as uh, like Botox because they were so perfect. They were like yeah. pristine. So it was just like no so this ages. aspiration, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and it was based off of, like, you know, the perfect housewife, but it's also pretty much based off of, like, Barbie. Yeah. You know? That makes tiny, so much sense, yeah. Tiny, tiny waists. Uh, the, art- the author of that article, Our Bodies, Ourselves, the Stepford Wives, uh, Alyssa Court is her name, says, the phrase has been taken up to describe a general phenomenon. It was the term for what middle-class women didn't want to end up as, but with a camp accent ensuring that those using it wouldn't be mistaken for earnest. So it's like a joke, okay. <laughs> right? Uh, again, it's a cautionary tale. And Alyssa brings up this uh, an amazing point that I think is super prev- prevalent in regards to our current series about social horror. Uh-huh. And that there's this, um, she dubbed it the like at least clause, essentially. So it's this idea when we have like social horror films that there's always this excuse or explanation for how we got to that point uh-huh. that's like easy to be like like oh that can never happen in real life because that doesn't exist so like if yeah. you think of invasion of the body snatchers it's like the only reason that the world got that bad is because there's aliens Right? The only reason that Stepper Wives exist is because they're robots. Like, there's no way. Spoilers! <laughs> yes. I'm uh, kidding. There's no way <laughs> in, like, our real world that we'd ever get to the point where people would want us to be subservient robots, right? Yeah. There's no way we would just do that. We'd have to be turned into a robot in order for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I think it's so funny because this compared to what we're going to talk about next week, it's going to be really fun. Yeah, it's uh, a whole situation. <laughs> uh, so we just have like, so like in most dystopian films, we're kind of thrown right into the middle of them. Yeah. All right. So we're kind of like, we have to just believe this world. It happened overnight. So it really feels science fiction, right? Like it could never happen. It's this distant future that like, crazy things would have had to be in place in order for that world to happen which is why next week when we talk about handmaid's tale and the way it peppers in the progression to that it's so much more impactful than something like stepford wise where we're kind of in it and it's like there's this absurd technology it's like haha that's not real (laughs) yeah exactly uh 
so in this film, uh, Stephen Wive kind of solidifies our pride or like hubris, right? Okay. Uh, that like w- that would never happen, right? This idea that there's no way, um, and that they wouldn't they would have to turn us into robots because we would never do that, right? Because we've come so far, we can't go back. <laughs> yeah, I think something that um, the remake misses, which is the one from two thousand four. Uh, is like this one of the points of the first one, which is that the first one is definitely a horror film, and it is terrifying. And the second one, it, or the remake, it is comedy. Uh-huh. It's, it's poking fun, and I think because it was taking for granted our progression. Yeah, I would agree. So it was like, ha ha ha! Wasn't that a crazy idea back then when we thought people would do that? Uh, and so it's like, of course that wouldn't happen now. And also having like uh, in the remake having love be like this, you know, powerful thing that like destroys them and they're uh-huh. able to fight back. Uh, and it totally kind of like avoids the severity of this like, of, like whole ser- society. Yeah, like oppression of women in terms of like serving. Mm-hmm. Serving like it's totally men. Overli- like it was just like here's some dopey dudes uh, instead of like people being like those dudes switched out their super powerful and amazing wives for obedient robots. This is worse than our AI episode. <laughs> so yeah, and the thing is, it's like it's they weren't even like they morphed weirdly into robots. Like you have to suspend all disbelief that this would be oh, scientifically yeah. possible. But like it's just they have chips in their brain. Yeah, yeah. Only the husband is a full-on robot. Yeah, because she murdered him. Yeah, I I think and it's super fun and playful. This new uh, the remake uh, and like it is like poking fun at the absurdity of the plot. Yeah. Which it is very absurd, right? And the fact that, like, the first one took it so seriously is pretty fun. Um, and there are, like, really cool moments. Um, we even have, like, a new element with the gay character. Uh-huh. Uh, that, uh, Roger, who is essentially equated to the unruly, headstrong wife and is eventually turned into, gasp, a gay Republican. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, um I think it's kind of funny, too, that whole gay Republican thing, because there is a scene in Handmaid's Tale season two where character has a similar conversation. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Um, but I feel like we really miss out the severity. And I'm totally not knocking this film, because I enjoyed it. And I have oh, fun. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Right? Uh, and I love anything that Bette Midler's in. She looks like my mom, so I love it. Uh, but we co- totally miss, like, the toxic masculinity of this world and the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because uh, it's just like, <laughs> It just makes it seem like that isn't something that's extremely real and prevalent in our society. Mm-hmm. And it's just a funny, ha men don't yeah. feel that way. And it was, yeah, and it d- definitely felt like we felt like we had progressed past a p- time when men would want that. And it was like a joke. But it's not true. Um, so... In this society, we have, like, men in their locker room talk, uh, in their secret manly men clubs, where they're whining about their nagging wives. Yep. Super fun. Uh, there's so many lines uh, where men cry out, like, she wants me to cook, but I'm a man. <laughs> like, how dare she ask me to pick up the kids from school? I have a penis. <laughs> Somehow that means something here uh which made me think of this like twitter thread i saw where it was a bunch of men who were coming forward and like explaining times when they were called either feminine or gay because they did some like mundane task like flossing like some guy was like someone called me gay because i flossed or like voting or something like there's all these things that have been dubbed <laughs> as being yeah it was, voting yeah it was absurd um i tried well, to find i guess it. it's good the other ones aren't voting yeah, if I that's do, what's great <laughs> um, <laughs> that's ridiculous um what i think also <laughs> happens in this one is that we also miss how toxic this society is also to the men yeah because again they were like poked fun at but we totally miss like and i we didn't miss it. It's there. Um, that they're like, they they can't handle their life, <laughs> you know, and that yeah. they're just kind of um, emasculated and feeling down for themselves. But that's because of the society that they live in. Like, they can't even be happy with these headstrong, beautiful women well, who are their partners. Well, because makes yeah. them feel like that is failing because the men have to provide. Yeah. Like, there is a line um, where I think it's like... Um, What's the what's the evil guy's name? The actor. 
Uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. Where he's just like, uh, like, what, what are we supposed to have, like, women who are like, like, what are men supposed to feel if they have women who are, like, bringing home the bacon and doing all this stuff, essentially? I'm totally butchering this line. And she's, like, uh, proud. <laughs> she's, like, her response is, like, uh, you're lucky. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you should feel lucky that you have a wife that's super smart and can, like, hold her own in an argument and, like, can, like, contribute to society in this, like, profound way. And she's, like, how, yeah. how could you not want that? It's... It's really bizarre because it's you're basically saying that you want to have to struggle and do everything yourself and feel totally alone. Like, why why not be a team? Yeah. That should be the better alternative. And you have to in today's society. That your partner's in this. Yeah. And, I mean, even you have people who know that that's a thing in today's society, but, like, actively, like, can't cope and the thing about it is like that they can't just do it themselves this is further an idealistic idea because it exists in a time pre-2008 stock market crash yeah (laughs) and also uh we have uh inflation uh cost of living has risen and like you said in our classism uh episode our uh our paychecks are the same like our, we have not received a cost of living increase. Exactly. So it is actually inflation. impossible to have that idealistic life where the man is going working one job and providing for a whole time, whole, whole entire family. Like you need two working parents. That's yeah. just how it works now. Um, or you need someone who's working several jobs and they're never home. And then it's like, now they're a bad parent because they can't be home. Like, you just can't win. So it's it's even more ridiculous to think that. Like, only the rich people who could afford a house in Stepford could ever even imagine something like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have uh, Matthew Broderick's character who kind of, like, digs back at, like, this idea of, like, loving your wife no matter what, what she's like. Um, but he did have that, like, really cringy, awful when I'm home line. Yeah, that that was <laughs> I was like, excuse me? What is that? Uh, Which is in response to his loving, trying so hard to please him wife, who baked like 500 cupcakes, asking him when to expect him to be home. And he's like, what, I'm home. I was like, "Mm mm-mm, you're talking to me like that. You ain't coming home. (laughs) It was my answer. It's the grossest. It's just like, you should be a team. You're Mm -hmm. two human beings deciding to cohabitate. Mm-hmm. Make children, maybe. Yeah. Live together. Yeah. You should be a team. There's no when I get home. It's like, no, we are partners I need in to this. know. Like, we have kids to dare, take care of. Yeah. And yeah, we also so have, gross. like, it's even further implemented with, like, the the toxicity towards men as well with our new gay character, right? So with the transformation of him was, like, he was supposed to be the unruly, really, like, mouthy housewife right yeah. so they turned him into a stepford wife which turn which wasn't what you would imagine like you would think he would be all dressed up in like you know uh baking cakes and all that stuff but they literally took all of the like uh generic gay character <laughs> things away from him like they took all this colorful clothing and his like yeah. um his name brand clothing like uh his gucci and all the other things that made him like this gay archetype and flattened him out into the man yeah and he was the gay republican <laughs> cough peter jag cough uh where he was Saying, like, it, he was on a platform of, like, just because you're gay doesn't mean you have to be, like, flamboyant and raise your voice and uh, wear fla- flashy clothing. And because that's what it means to be a man in Stepford. Yeah. Men have to follow the rules of the men. And women have to follow the rules of the women. Which so is, both groups are being put in these boxes. Yeah. There's no, like, wavering between them. So I found this article in The Guardian called Living Dolls by Jeanette Winterson. And she says, men must be men in Stepford, even if they're gay. The message is that owning a penis is everything, no matter how you choose to use it. The double message is that no guy should behave like a girl. Any more than girls should behave like guys. You have a gender role, you got to fill it. And he was not. (laughs) Like, because he was, he dared to be himself. Yeah. Uh, which is, it's everyone, right? Everyone dared to be themselves. 
Um, Jean uh, Jeanette also goes on to compare the two films, which I thought was super interesting, of uh, the old one versus the, the remake. So, at the beginning of the women's movement, men and women feared a disaster of Stepford proportions. Men would never cope with the new threat of their status, and women would be made to pay. Murdering and turning us into robots is the price of feminism, the earlier films seem to say. Because in the first one, that's what they weren't just getting a chip, chip in them. They were being murdered and replaced with robots. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then she ended up having to, like, fight back and murder people back. Like, it was a horror film. Yeah. Whereas in this one, we're having fun, right? So the comedy remake lies in the excess. The message is that when a woman breaks out of her nature-intended backseat role, she loses her restraint in all sense of proportion. The message here is, you got what you wanted, girls, but how much has it cost, and was it worth it? Uh, Right-wing think tanks all over the world point to increasing divorce rates, child crime, and rocketing levels of family stress, and blame it on women who are more interested in personal achievement than family life. <laughs> so in modern, so in the old one, our heroine was uh, a photographer, and they moved to Stepford not because like she had to escape, but because they were rising in status, like they yeah. were getting money, so they went to the suburbs. That's what happens, and that was the story. It was like, how dare she have her own job and do her own thing? In the remake, it was like a woman who was now running a television station and making this like corrupt like TV shows and like making her own, and that was the price that they had to pay. Was she was being punished by getting sent to Stepford, and all three of them had been Bobby as well, yeah. um, and uh, she had to finish her Roger. book. Roger, mm -hmm. right? So we have like. Uh, it, like we've said many times on this podcast, that these films are a product of their time. And that's why it's, like, it's pretty outdated, and I would love to see, like, a new Stepford Wives, although, like, Get Out exists, <laughs> and it's very reminiscent of uh, Stepford Wives, but with racial commentary. But I think we could use one for women as well. Uh, yeah. Jeanette goes on to explain how the remake is more timely and prevalent to the audience of its time in 2004, where she says, For us now, the sight of Kidman baking 500 fairy cakes in an effort to be a real woman is funny, because we don't suffer from the anxiety of a generation whose mothers were those 1950s housewives. Yeah. So we don't have that direct uh, generation situation where our moms are like, you know, you have to be this person, right? Like, I certainly don't have that. Uh, I come from a very matriarchal family line, so it's always very foreign to me to be like, you do what now? You're not the one who's going out and buying, like, yeah. making money? That's all we did. Um, not to say the men didn't, too, but it was always, like, yeah, very yeah, I matriarchal. Mean, I raised my single mom, too, and it was just like, you did what you needed to do to survive. Men consistently... Let you down. Weren't nothing but butts. Because I can't curse. So yeah. <laughs> uh, they ain't nothing but butts the whole time. Like you can't rely on a bed for nothing. Like you can't. You, they say they're gonna show up, they don't show up. Yeah. They say they're, they're gonna do. bring you birthday presents, they don't bring you birthday presents, whatever. Yeah. I Women think it's do like, it. And at that time, like I said, th those fears were funny. Like we yeah. went from like in the the seventy two version, those were very real fears, because we were like burning bras. We were like, you know, um, uh, not writing, but you know, protesting and doing yeah. all kinds of things. Right, we were making a statement, and then in two thousand four, it was kind of like lukewarm. Nothing was going on, <laughs> you know. Like yeah. two thousand four was like a blip in the universe where everyone was kind of like we're not questioning anything <laughs> we're just existing so it's a time where um it could be made fun of because everything was everything was politically incorrect and it was fun uh but we have this idea that you know these fears are too absurd for reality which i find really funny uh considering what we'll c cover next week <laughs> when Tale. because it's not it's it it's the future, right? And it, it is terrifying. And sometimes we kind of see ourselves regressing towards those values that you talked about, um, the traditional ones. And so these things do feel really pertinent because women are getting more independent and making their way. Yeah. And I mean, the things that I mentioned are all arguments that people still use commonly today to justify mm -hmm. those things. And when we talk about Handmaid's Tale, there are a lot of the arguments made to justify what they're doing to the women of the society. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just like... People like to laugh and think, haha, it's so far fetched. But I think honestly, if like women got to like we have the right to say no now if we mm -hmm. don't want to have sex. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a big deal. They're trying to take away birth control because we decided, hey, we be maybe we don't have to wanna have babies 
at all, but also like when we can't afford them or also when like we don't get married at 15 anymore. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. it's an archaic ritual. We shouldn't revolve yeah. our lives around that. And it's like science also supplements to a point where I think like if the option was that men could go somewhere and make babies with robots, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We'll or be fine if we can just, you know, make them in a We'll in keep a the ones tube. we like and <laughs> the men we like and the rest of you oh, all can gotcha. go somewhere with your robot wife. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> as long this, as they aren't sentient. Yes. This idea that Rupert... R- Rupert. Robot wives is absurd, right? Uh, or is it? <laughs> uh, and that's, like, no doubt, yeah. Robot wives is absurd. Because that wouldn't really happen. No, it's not. AI. We had a whole episode about it. Gabe? Yeah, but to that extent, I think... Okay, I'm kidding. (laughs) And to replace the ones you have. Yes. You would just fall in love with new ones. Anyway. uh, But the idea that men would change us doesn't seem really far-fetched. Yeah. And I think that's what we're missing. Like, we put robot in there, and then we're like, oh, it's funny. But if you think about, like, they want to manipulate us to perform this function that they think is what we should do, that's very realistic. That's very likely. Um... And the theme with the, the well, the tone in regards to the theme changes with the new film. Yeah. Like, it, it's just not taking it very serious. So Jeanette says uh, that women deserve to be punished was implicit to both the earlier film and the novel. That women have a right to be themselves, literally, i.e. a right not to be reprogrammed, is embedded in the new Stepford. Yeah. So, like, the previous one had this fear that we were going to be punished for trying. And then the other one is just like, just be you. <laughs> like, and love will prevail. Uh, I think what's super interesting with the the new film, because it's a twist in the end, it's not like the original, is that at the heart of the issue, we have a woman who is the creator. So, yeah. spoilers. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll see this, we'll see, like, this woman in power creating everything again in Handmaid's Tale when we talk about it, which I think is super important. Like, this dichotomy of women who... Um, what did she call her? Uh, Serena Joy calls it domestic feminism. And there are many domestic feminists that exist now that really truly believe that the role of women is in the house. Yeah. It's just what they think. And it's generally like Christian women. Uh, sometimes I get lost in the rabbit hole of like those open pages that people have where they'll post like really crazy, like religious things where they're like, for the woman has to do this and that and that. And I'm like, wow, this is 2020. We're still doing this. Uh, yeah. But I think it it only for the saturation of the toxic masculinity that's implemented in this vision. Like having Glenn Close or Claire, as her name is, uh, envision a perfect world where women are subservient to men. Yeah. Like she had this idea of this tra- like traditional life. And the reason she had that ideal is because of how ingrained like the patriarchy is in our society. Um, So she wanted women who are perfect, obedient, lovely, and flawless, and only live to serve and be loved. And I think that's a big thing too, that she totally missed the mark with that, because those men did not love their wives. No man who's going to chain their wife out for a robot loves her. (laughs) Yeah, who like doesn't want her to be a real person. Or herself. Like she literally was that kind of person. Like, there, so yeah. <laughs> there's this line, so, because um, we, like, as viewers, you see that, because the men clearly did not love their wives, uh, because at the core of them, they were these hardworking, headstrong, powerful women who, like, love that. So there's this line that's, like, my favorite in the whole film is, uh, Walt says to his wife when they, like, reconcile, he says, no more black, only high-powered, neurotic, castrating Manhattan career bees wear black. Is that what you want to be? And Joe replies, Ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> and I was like, and it's like this punch and it just keeps going. And it kind of like the delivery kind of reminded me of Adam's family for some reason. But uh-huh. I loved it so much because she was like, I like she's totally missing like what he's saying. She's like, yeah, I've always wanted to be that. Like that's a positive thing to me. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, I love wearing black. And she still, despite that, went out of her way to try to be the perfect wife for him. And I think like that added part really like hits home too is like... Is that why he kept her? Because she was trying. Because yeah. I don't think any, any of the other wives tried. Uh, yeah. So in reality, like I said, these men never loved their wives. Uh, and that's the only reason why they were able to transform them to robots to begin with. That's the only way a man could do that. Yeah. Which means, sorry, Claire, but your society sucks. 
because <laughs> uh, Claire was also planning to transform the men, uh, and that is overlooked. I think, like, because it's so last minute that she yeah. reveals that, that it just kind of goes over. And I don't know what the society that Claire would make would look like other than it would be boring. Uh, but maybe, like, Pleasantville? Yeah. Right? Like I would say Pleasantville. Pleasantville. Totally gray. Uh, but Walter did love his headstrong wife, and she he she loved his goofy self. Um, and this reminded me of uh, when I brought my boyfriend home to meet my mom, and she was harassing him and questioning him and asked him if I was the breadwinner and was, like, working, I don't know, I was famous or something. I was working really hard because that's what I do. Uh, that would he stay home and take care of the kids? And he immediately was like, yeah. Uh, and I also asked your boyfriend, Kat, that same question. He was like, yeah, sign me up. He keeps <laughs> telling me I'm going to be f- like, he, so he's yeah, really rooting for it. He's really funny. Cause he'll honestly, he'll be like, you, he always like, your eyes are going to get famous before I'm famous. No. Like what? Like he he's always says. He's in the, he was just in the newspaper. No, I know. But that's what I'm saying. He's always just like. He wants you to. He, he, but he has so much him. faith. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think with that existence, we have come a long way. Right? Yeah. Like with those two answers. One, there's no way that. And if someone answered a different way that they would be with us. That's <laughs> One, fair. we're two. We are the headstrong women. Like, I don't think we would end up in Stepford. There's no way. I'd be so uncomfortable. Um, but I would love to make a remake of Setford Wives. Uh, although I feel like it wouldn't even work because we have men who stay at home and love it. So it's kind of like... Um, but our real enemies are the self-proclaimed nice guys, or like incels, uh, who expect us to be obedient. So maybe the whole thing is that we don't... They don't have wives and then they have to abduct them. Hmm. There's a really good song that says, Nice Guys Finish Last in the Bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> to get it yeah uh, since then it's like it kind of gets rid of the gross insult yeah. thought process or it's yeah. like nice guys finish last yeah but like, in the bedroom because the they let ladies yeah. go first I guess see what you're saying yeah uh, it's positive they don't do that <laughs> but um <laughs> Uh, one final tidbit is that in the novel, the book, there is a black family that is yeah. very prominent. There is no black family in either one of these films. Um, in the new one, I'm guessing that it's kind of switched out for, like, the one gay couple, which I guess is, like, they can only have one minority or in one, like, not white, not straight thing <laughs> in a film at a time. So that's fun. Uh, that sounds like I also from was, the time like, trying to put a Puerto Rican in that. <laughs> Talking about a Puerto Rican when he's like, when I'm home, like, it's like, you when you're what? Because <laughs> not this one. You ain't coming back here. <laughs> you don't live here anymore. Your stuff is already outside. <laughs> you're going to see it on your way out. It's fine. It's going right through the window. <laughs> 